In this problem, we're given a series and we're asked to use either the root test or the ratio test to determine whether it converges or diverges. Now, as a general rule of thumb, you want to use the root test if, you're a general, if the general term of your sequence involves powers or exponents. And you want to use the ratio test if it involves factorials. And that's not always true. It doesn't guarantee that it'll work every time, but it'll probably save you a lot of effort. Um, definitely save you a lot of time guessing which one, um, which one will give you, give you an answer. And the reason for that is because factorials cancel out nicely. If we have you know, facts, factorial like some k plus 1 factorial in the numerator and k in the denominator, then well, the result is just k plus 1. We have a lot of, a lot of nice uh, um, cancellation. So, all right, so the ratio test says that we need to look at the limit as uh, k goes to infinity, the absolute value of the ratio of a k plus 1 term to the kth term. So this will be 5 times k plus 1 over 1 plus k plus 1 factorial uh, times the reciprocal of the kth term. So we're just dividing by the kth term. That's 1 plus k factorial over 5k. All right, now, since we're looking at the limit and we're looking at this k gets very large, we can just kind of assume that this is um, it is positive and it drops the absolute value signs. Uh, since you know, each term is positive, k plus 1 is definitely positive. k is soon to be large, so k plus 1 is, again is positive. Um, and we're just multiplying, so there's no need to worry about um, any, of the or any of this becoming negative. So we want the, uh, want the limit as k goes to infinity of, uh, let's see, Let's just multiply the terms together. So we have 5 uh, k plus 1 times uh, 1 plus k factorial all over uh, 5k times 1 plus uh, quantity k plus 1 factorial. So our 5s cancel out right away. And say so let's distribute um, or let's, uh, multiply out uh, these two terms. So that gives us the limit as k goes to infinity of k plus. Um, let's see, actually, let's, let's do it this way. Let's just multiply uh, k plus one times one plus k fact uh, k plus one times k factorial. And we'll break up the denominators. We have 1 plus k plus 1 factorial here, and or k times this. And we'll have k times 1 plus uh, k plus 1 factorial right there. Okay, so and we're adding these two terms, so let's just look at the individual limits. And actually, let's, let's break it up one more time. Here we have a k uh, plus 1 in the numerator, so we can write this as the limit as k goes to infinity of k over k times 1 plus k plus 1 factorial plus 1 over uh, that same denominator. And the second term will have, um, again, the same denominator. The reason why I'm splitting it up so many times is uh, so we can cancel out as much as possible. Um, so here in the numerator we have, uh, oh, here we can actually do something even better. We have k plus 1 times k factorial. So this here is just equal to k plus 1 times k times k minus 1 all the way down to uh, times you know, 2 times 1. 
which it's just k factorial, or k plus 1 factorial. So this is k plus 1 factorial. All right, well now in this term we can cancel out k's. And we can, then we can add these two uh, terms together. So we have the limit as, uh, of course we're taking the limit of this whole thing, the limit as k goes to infinity uh, of 1 over 1 plus k plus 1 factorial plus uh, k plus 1 factorial plus 1. Um, over the denominator k times uh, 1 plus k plus 1 factorial. So now we look here and we've got um, the term k plus 1 factorial plus 1 in the numerator and the denominator. So these cancel out. And hopefully that explains why I just did kind of these messy calculations up here to you know, break everything up so we could get, um, so we could get the most ca cancellation possible. So this leaves us with uh, the limit as k goes to infinity of well, 1 over 1 plus uh, k plus 1 factorial. Obviously as k gets you know, larger and larger, um, this is just going to go to um, 0. So let's get rid of that. And then we're just looking at the limit of this term, which is 1 over k. And of course, that goes to 0 as well. So going back to our original problem where we were trying to determine whether the series converged or diverged, we used the ratio test and figured out that this limit, uh, the limit of absolute value of successive terms, is equal to 0 which, if you recall, the ratio test says that such a series converges if um, the limit of successive term, absolute value of the successive terms is less than or equal to 1. Uh, well, 0 is certainly less than or equal to 1. So this means the series converges. 